Hey there, I wanted to share this with you. I I have a new thing. I have a new pen. This is, uh, if you're wondering, the 1928 catalog for the Wall Eversharp Company. That's my laptop. Ooh. Who cares? But here's the, the, the pen part. And that pen that is the second from the left is the one that I have that I just got from the inestimable, just plain really nice guy, Mike Daigle, who knows what he's doing. It's the 64 PBC for five bucks. The telephone word was S T A N C stank royal blue pyroxylin barrel highly polished yellow gold filled clip cap filling lever and bands number four nib and it appeared to have had the here it is what did it have a, it looks like a signature nib right that's kind of what that looks like to me anyway so we'll see. And it's supposed to be a number four. I'm not sure if it's the right nib um, relative to what's here in this catalog. Uh, these pens were made for a few years, as far as I know. 1928, I believe, was the first year because of the double bands. The double bands on fountain pens came out basically in 1928. That was like the look, or one of the looks of the time. Um, there was a lot of industrial espionage going on at the time, as there is now. I mean, if you've ever noticed, have you ever noticed that it seems like every single car that comes out, with the exception perhaps of one mark like Nissan, check that out, uh, will have basically the same design, the same style. That seems to be especially the, the case these days. Well, anyway, that seems to be what's going on. This uh, is my latest acquisition. They're all the same height, so it's a little tricky to, to pull it out. But uh, these are great pens. This is a surprise, surprise wall. Another one. I do like them a lot. Um, it's colloquially called the tulip clip. You can see it's got that charming little tulip shape there. I've wondered one of these for a long time. Finally have one. Sorry. And here it is. It's in really nice, like again, like frustratingly overly nice condition, which is a little frustrating because I want to use it and not feel guilty about using it. But if I don't use it, I'm a fool. It's in really nice shape and it's worth using. <laughs> But also worth preserving. So I kind of have to do both. See, it's a Walt Eversharp. It's the oldest that it is is 1928. It's a great pen. I love that clip. That is so cool. It's also a, a known as a military clip because that's what it was. That was kind of a soldier clip, actually. I think is what they were, they called it. It is lapis lazulitic blue. It's lighter than it may appear here. This is not the ideal light. It's a million o'clock. I have artificial lighting coming from one severe extreme light source. Anybody who knows or cares about photography at all would be stunned that this is producing any kind of a result at all. But it's a great pen. Uh, I've wanted one of these for a long time and I finally have one. Yeah. Um, great look. Let's see what that nib is all about. It writes like you wouldn't believe. It's unbelievable. But I need to... Uh, Get a good look at what it actually is. It's of the period, I know that. Let's see. Does that help us at all? I think I was doing better before. Let me get some light on the board here. There you go. I can't really tell.
but it's a wall of the period. It may not be the, I don't know. I mean, this might be a very early implementation, a slightly early nib. It is, it, the nib appears to be a little earlier than 1928. Just a little earlier, but anyway. Great, great pen. I'll post this thing because, you know what? It was meant to be posted. It needed to be. What is it? The, I think today is the 18th. Let's look at this pen. It's really lovely. Fits in the hand very nicely. This is our happy nib. It's a happy nib. The Bob Ross of fountain pens. I could be. I need to get the fro. The faux fro. The fake fro. These are killer nibs. So it's the 18th, I think, right, of June? Let's see if this works. You know what? I'm going to go fancy here. Yeah. And zoom in a bit. There's some crazy zoom. I'm curious what this will produce. Just for ha-ha's. That's crazy. That's crazy. This is great. Get to something a little bit more reasonable, perhaps. Let's try reasonable. Let's go over here. We don't want to waste too much space, right? Crazy pen. I keep talking about how these feel in performance, in use. And that's kind of the thing. They're a lot like cars. They really are like automobiles. That's why I drive them the way that I do. You come up with analogies all the time. Um... And how useful are they? That's a great nib, man. This is a great pen. I mean, check out this nib. I mean, that's a big part of why I'm into these. I, I really love how they look. They are so 20s. They are so 20s. How cute is that? They're charming. They're so charming. They're so deco. How tiny that really tiny. Oh, see how small that is? It's like, hey, a little bit bigger here. Okay, there you go. 
is we're going to have to keep it really tiny, keep it small. All right, so you have to go like, that is so weird. You've got to actually look through the camera. This is a great pen. Anyway, uh, there's all sorts of discussion about what these vintage nibs feel like and what they're supposed to be capable of. And it's all feel. I mean, it really is all feel. They're instruments. They're sports cars from the 1950s from Germany. It's a Porsche 356. It's really what it feels like. It really... Look at that hairline. Right over there. Right, right there. Very cool. I mean, you can do it with these things. Dimitri, you're cool. There are people I should be making shouts out to. Um, there's a story here. It's impossible to tell the story while using the thing that you're telling the story about. Oops. See, that's more natural. That was a boo-boo. I mean, you know, this camera can't even get the, the hair lines. Oops, that was me. That was user error. You're wondering. Oh, this is terrific. Okay, check this thing out. I mean, check out this nib. There you go. I wish you could see this in real life. This is too cool. Anyway, this is a great pen. These, uh, these 1920s walls with flexible nibs. They're really worth finding, seeking, and getting. I mean, this nib is so snappy. And, yeah, it is kind of rubbery. I hate to say it. I never liked that term. But you know what? I hate to say it. I think it's apt. I think it's actually apt. I do. This is a great pen. Anyway, so yeah, what makes this pen great? I'll tell you what makes this pen great. Everything. These people cared about it a lot. They cared about how to make it, how to design it, what it should look like. There's that W. There you go.
too much fun. This is a great, great pen. Very pretty. Uh, it wasn't cheap. Again, you know, things that are really nice are usually not cheap. It wasn't insane either. There's some things that are really expensive. And you're like, eh, yeah, it's really cool. It's unusual. It's rare. It's desirable. I get it. But that's a lot of money. This is in that area where it's like, yeah, it's a lot of money, but it's not completely nuts. You know, I don't know. It's, you know, to a lot of people, they'd say you're out of your mind. You're spending how much on this thing? And it's a lot of noise because it's low light, but it's actually a pretty decent camera. I apologize for such low light. But what a great pen. What a great nib. I'll, yeah, I'll tell you, this, this pen is just plain great. What makes it great? It is great. <laughs> it's just great. And thank you, everybody. Have a gorgeous, beautiful evening or daytime.